Thanks to the supporters at channel member Harold Rotmo. Well, I think, and I am very much touching wood as I say this, but I think we might be turning things around here at Brighton. We've won three of our last four games. Admittedly, two of them were in the Europa League, where we've been winning anyway. But we have won a Premier League game, again using a different tactic. And now is the time that the media have decided if I lose the next game, I'm going to get sacked. The board haven't mentioned this to me. They wouldn't go behind my back, surely. Hello and welcome to part five of my FM24 B to save with Brighton. I'm Kevin coming up on today's episode. Apparently it's a must win game against Nottingham Forest uh, because we had a media message. Um, sacked. Let's search for the word sacked. No, let's search for the word forest. You would think I would have this ready. Um, there you go. Nottingham Forest clash could be Chapman's last. The Brighton Hove Albion hierarchy appeared to be finally losing patience with manager Kevin Chapman, according to ITV Sport. Balls to ITV Sport is what I say. Um, apparently, they're still pleased with my management of the team. We've qualified for the knockout rounds of the Europa League. They are devastated by our league position. But, you know, they're happy with everything else. We're doing we're doing okay. We beat we beat Sheffield United 4-0 in the league. Thanks to an Ansu Fati hat trick. We actually played a front three in that game of uh, Mitoma, Fati, and March. We had Fati as a centre forward and he got a hat trick. So I think Fati at centre forward might be the way forward for us for a little while. Unfortunately, Mitoma got injured in that game. So that was his first start of the season. He's not going to be able to play. The other thing we did is we switched to a wing play system. Wing backs. Wingers, no faffing about. We don't have the mid the midfielders to be able to play ticky tacker. I've been persisting with it all season because I'm convinced Brighton should be able to play a nice, fancy, short passing, possession based game. We don't have the midfield for it, so the midfield are just there to transition the ball from the defenders to the attack, and their job is to get crosses in, score goals. It worked against Sheffield United. It worked again against Panathinaikos. Danny Welbeck looked like Erling Haaland against Panathinaikos. And fingers crossed it will work again here against Nottingham Forest because if it doesn't, I actually might be sacked. Although we're not bottom of the league anymore and a win here against Forest could actually drag us out of the relegation zone. Albeit it'd have to be a big win because the difference in goal difference between us and Burnley is a big one. There's also dynamics and transfer news going on as ever. As you can see, I've now fallen out with Adam Webster, Jan Paul Van Heck, Mahmoud Dahoud, and Julio Enciso, who's back in the first team squad. By popular demand, there was a meeting. So I had to bring him back into the first team squad. Um, but I'm just binning him off. If I can't put him in the reserves, I'm going to sell him. So we already agreed to sell Igor to Torino. We've now confirmed Adam Webster um, is going to be joining Al Nasser on the 1st of January for 28 million. Van Heck is joining Torino as well for six and a half million. Torino getting two humans from us there. Um, in January um, and we've also got Dahoud who's going to be joining West Ham in January in a £20 million deal so that's over £60 million of transfer money coming in so with that coming in we are looking to make some new moves so we've already got contract negotiations in for Federico Gatti um, the Juventus defender six foot three, and also Hiroki Ito um, the Stuttgart def um, right back uh, sorry left back slash centre back two big good defenders that are available for decent prices. Um, I know we've already, I mean, we're selling three defenders. We've got to bring in, bring in a couple of new ones. I'm also trying to bring in a central midfielder. Oyan Sanset from Athletic Bilbao has got a £26 million release clause and is an actual, you know, creative central midfield player, which we don't really have. I mean, I tell you what, it'd be lovely to not have to play either Lalana or Milner in a football match. And then um, because we are in desperate search of goals, uh, Pedro, look at that jawline on that boy. Pedro for 10 million for a guy who's got six caps from Brazil and he's still only 26. He's a striker. He can score goals and he's cheap. I realise that means we'll have three players coming in, uh, four players coming in and only three going out at the moment. So the Europa League registration issue isn't going to get any easier. But I'm just getting started. If I survive this run of form, there's going to be business done in January. No more messing around. Right. 
this is the team. This is the new tactic and this is the team for the hugely important game against Forest. We are going with stealing goal. Um, Estupinian is not fit to play. Uh, Past Kev, what is your thought process there? Um, your thought process is Veltman. There we go. Do that. Um, Lewis Dunk. Why is it? I mean, I know we played midweek. Why is Lewis Dunk not in the team? Why are we go? Hang on. Why would we want Webster and Van Heck when they're both leaving? Um, oh, and why have I got NC so in the? T I guess actually that one does make sense because Matoma's injured, and I want to keep Fatty up from. You can tell I've you can tell I've slept since I since I picked this team. Goodness me. Um, okay, it does now make a little bit more sense. Is there anyone obvious who's missing here? For Bruggen made his debut in the. Uh, in the Europa League game that we've just played. So there doesn't seem to be any obvious... Although, to be fair, João Pedro should be on... Who the... Right. Give me a minute. I don't know what I've done here. Right. This looks... I mean, I don't know what... I don't know what that team was that we've done there. I think what I've actually probably done is just hit selection advice before going to bed and then thinking that I've actually picked the team because that was a that was a proper mess. Goodness me. So this is the actual team. Stealing goal, a back four of Walker, Peters, Dunk, Scherz and Veltman. A back four who all want to be here. That's progress. Berg at the base of the midfield with Gross and Lalana ahead of him. We are going to move Fatty out onto the left. I know he got a hat-trick up front in his previous game, but since then, Welbeck has scored two goals as centre forward and... I, and CISO is at war with me. So it seems like a mad idea to play him. So Fatty on the left, March on the right, well back up front. And we've actually got the likes of João Pedro actually on the bench, which again, it's all progress. Um, if you're wondering where Evan Ferguson is, he, like like Matoma, is injured at the moment. So he's not available for this one. But to finish your sentence for you there, Kev, uh, don't have the button on your mouse mapped to OBS and Football Manager when you've just clicked out onto OBS a minute ago because when you press that button to advance in game you stop the recording which I'm glad I caught because there was no message telling me I've done it I think you've missed one screen but we've made it to here <laughs> Goodness me. Can you imagine if we had the game where I got fired and I didn't record any of it? What on earth? What would I do? <laughs> Goodness me. But here we go. Now let's focus in because we really do need to win this football match. No more worrying about YouTube videos. Let's worry about managing Brighton, winning a football match. We've won three of our last four games. Dynamics are slowly improving. We're starting to get some actual transfers done, which we weren't really able to do in the summer. There is progress being made. Um, if you're wondering why I've got Ansu Fati and Solly March on winger um, instructions rather than inside forward or inverted winger because they're both playing on the opposite side to their feet... A strange sentence, isn't it? Um, it's because for both of them, I'm using the uh, what we're going to call the Bakayo Saka instruction, um, where on your wingers you can tell them to cut inside, so they're effectively playing as wider versions of inverted wingers. Inverted wingers start narrow and then try to cross from there, wingers start wider, and if you have them on the cut inside instruction, then come inside. I want the width. We're playing on a wing play instruction. We're trying to play wide because we're trying to get around the side of all these narrow inverted wing back, inverted fullback systems that the AI is using. Almost every AI team is doing that. So I'm thinking get wider than them. So wingers, wing backs, but at the same time, I want, I still want them cutting in onto their strong feet and scoring goals, especially when we're not really getting much in the way of goals from our centre forwards. So that's the that's the plan. Hopefully it's not too fancy for the circumstances. It worked against Sheffield United. It worked against Panathinaikos. We are 1-0 down at home against Nottingham Forest. I, I'm really happy with the transfer business we're starting to get arranged for January. I'll be gutted if I get sacked before those players start to come in. I feel like I was at such a huge disadvantage in the uh, in the original transfer winner because nobody wanted to sign for us and because I don't use the player search screen. I, there was just no one coming through on scout reports. It's taken this long to get my scout reports up and running. Uh, maybe I should have made an exception to my no player search rule, but... 
I've always said using player search makes the game too easy. And this this little run of episodes has been a perfect demonstration of that. One of the reasons I'm suffering as much as I am is because I just couldn't find anyone to buy because my scouts were being too slow. So the ones I could buy didn't want to come in. And it's only now, what are we, into the middle of October, maybe into November now at this point in game, that we're actually starting to get some decent players that we can afford that want to join us come up on scout reports. And we've got four or five, well, four, is it four players lined up there who genuinely improve the starting 11? I just want to have the opportunity to manage them because I think we can go on a run. We've, we've already looked in yesterday's episode at the run of matches we've got if we can get past Arsenal. Obviously, we have to beat Forest here, take our medicine against Arsenal and hope it doesn't get me sacked. And then we've got a run of winnable games. We could be mid-table by the time those players turn up at Christmas, but we need a little bit of luck to go our way and we need to win matches like this one. We can't have any more defeats against the likes of Forest. At home, we've got to win our home matches against the teams who are going to be around us at the end of the season. And a team like Forest, as much as it probably shouldn't have been the plan at the start of the year, but right now they're likely to be a team who are going to be around and about where we are at the end of the season. We must beat them. Worryingly, again, Adam Lalana's our best player. He's like 60 years old. It is troublesome that he's our best player. He's our creative midfielder. That's why it's so important for us to bring in another one um, because we can't be relying on Adam Lalana. That it is it is a bonkers situation that we've got ourselves in here. Right, a set piece. We still haven't really made the most of these on FM24 yet. So maybe maybe today's the day. I mean, that wasn't the set piece, but it could still be today is the day. Right, Scherz plays it across to Dunk. Dunk, now out to Walker Peters on the left-hand side. Of course, Estupinian is getting close to being fit again. That probably isn't a penalty i'm not going to get excited the referee is wandering towards the penalty spot it looked outside of the area to me i think he's going to var everyone's crowding around him we've got the var penalty review maybe we are getting a little bit of luck go away because that for sure looked like it was outside of the area but a penalty has been given it's going to be gross to take <laughs> that's the first penalty we've scored all year. We've had a couple and missed them because we just had nothing go our way. Morale manager lives lives strong in in 20, 2024. Uh, but we are starting to turn the morale around. We're starting to get rid of the bad eggs who are dragging everybody else down. We've started to win a few matches. We are slowly but surely turning things around. We've got an international break before the Arsenal game as well, so you can be sure we're going to play another friendly or two against the local whipping boys, which, to be fair, half the squad don't even get to play in because they're off doing international stuff. Hopefully they have a fun time and get a little bit of a boost internationally while the ones who stay at home can get a little bit of a boost by beating some locals. But, I mean, this would be... I mean, I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched, but this would be two Premier League wins in a row, which would be a lovely situation to be in. Um, right, we are making some change. I, I, I dare not bring on NCSO. I know he's good, but I also know he hates me. <laughs> if anyone wanted him, I would sell him. But because his value is like 60 million, I asked his agent. His agent was like, yeah, no one wants him. So we're kind of stuck with him. I just want him to chill out <laughs> and then I'd use him. I mean, this is this is the... I would love to bring him on here. He's such a grumpy... I mean, I, I am bringing him on. And this might be a disaster. Jao Pedro can go up front and CISO can go out onto this. Which way are we better playing these? Probably... Is Almar, Almada's... We'll play him this way around. But we have got Mr. Grumpy on the pitch now. I mean, this could go one of two ways. Either he ruins morale of the players on the pitch and we end up losing, or he scores a goal, realises he actually loves me after all, stops being a misery, and everyone's happy. Shout Pedro of a big miss that we could have done with the rubber stamp of this result there. Because while it's only a one-goal advantage, there's always the danger that Forrest can grab and equalise. It'd be ridiculous if I get sacked because of a draw against Nottingham Forest. But this does get us up to 10 points. 
Good old Ted. I mean, we're level with Burnley if we win. It's beyond the 94th minute now. This is time added on at the end of time added on and Hudson O'Doy doing what Hudson O'Doy does. And uh, goodness me, we made hard work of it, but that is three wins in a row in all competitions, four from five, two in a row in the Premier League. We're still in the relegation zone, but we're showing signs of life. This wing play system seems to be doing stuff for us and we can continue to try and uh, get transfers lined up ready for December as well, or January as well. Right, international break. I'll meet you on the other side for Arsenal. Please don't sack me. for If I get sacked for losing against Arsenal, that's ridiculous. Well, inexplicable, but he no longer wants to leave. Um... He is still upset that he has been treated unfairly, but no one agrees with him anymore. Um, Adam Webster, who's already on his way out of the club, thinks we're underachieving in the league, which is fair enough. Evan Ferguson agrees. I'm not going to hold it against Evan Ferguson. Webster's on his way out. And we've also got several of these incoming players confirmed as well. So Ito, Sunset, Pedro, all join us in January. We're just waiting on the work permit for Gatti as well. Um, the Dahu deal to West Ham has been confirmed as well. So that's going to be four in, four out, 61 million in, 57 million out. So three, four troublemakers gone. For hopefully improvements to the team in. Starting to look up, boys and girls. Let's not get sacked in this game against Arsenal. I tell you what, selection advice in this new game is bonkers compared to how it's been in previous games. Anyone who's ever watched me stream, which, by the way, will be streaming tonight over on Twitch, um, but anyone who's ever watched me stream will know that I can happily go game upon game upon game, just generally following selection advice because it's usually pretty good. I've looked at it for this game. Patrick Berg at centre-back. Patrick Berg is an ineffectual centre-back. He prefers to be central in a three-man group. He's five foot ten. He cannot play centre-back, but selection advice says, I mean, his morale's high. Well, yeah, fair enough. I'm just going to play him in his position. Who are we squeezing in the team to get Scherz out and Berg at centre-back? We're squeezing in James Milner because his bravery and work rate, work rate make him a good team player. Again, he can just sit on the bench. It's fine. That's weird. I don't know why I'm being suggested that, but this is the team for Arsenal. It's starting to get a familiar look around it, which has got to be a positive. It's stealing goal. A back four of Estupinian, Dunk, Scherz and Walker-Peters. Berg, not in defence, at the base of the midfield. Gross and Lallana ahead of him. Fatty on the left, March on the right. Welbeck up front. Evan Ferguson, he's fit and scored for Ireland during the international break. Um, the the guys who didn't go off for international football won 12 nil. And Ciso, who's now happy at the club got a hat trick in that game it's all coming good but we did get the media message again before this match saying a poor result here could lead to me being sacked i actually think it would be bonkers almost worthy of a bug report if i got sacked losing away against arsenal after the form we've been in the last few matches and the ma and the games we've got coming up, we're obviously showing signs of turning the corner. We're improving. Morale is up. We've just been allowed to spend £60 million on transfers. Things are moving in the right direction. We're supposed to come here and lose against Arsenal, and it's fine if we do. So if I get fired off the back of this, especially with no warning, no indication at all from the board that they're losing patience, it's all media-led. Um, and Estupinian is injured again. He's literally just come back from injury. Um, well, I guess we bring Veltman on. I'm not bringing James Milner on to play left back. Walker Peters can go to left back. Veltman can go to right back. And Estupinian made it 15 minutes into his return to first team action. Long enough for us to be 1-0 down. Which is... Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Let's not worry about it. If we, I mean, if we can somehow snatch a draw, it could be enough to drag us out of the relegation zone. I mean, it won't be currently because the teams above us, there was someone on 11 points a second ago and now there's not. So someone above us is winning, which doesn't really help. Although I still maintain it's before Christmas. It's too early to worry about that. I would, I would say to anyone watching... And like the board should be watching. It should be obvious at this point we're not going to get relegated. We had a rough spell. We were figuring out a tactic. We were working out who our best players were. That's all done now. 
at this point, I am confident we have a system that works for this group of players. We have players coming in who improve the team and fit into this system. I think we're going to finish mid-table, which was the pre-season goal. And we might just go and win the Europa League as well, because we've been fantastic in that. So, Lord, this is my speech to you, my plea to you. If you sack me now, it's madness, and I will come back to haunt you. I will go and manage Crystal Palace, and I'll win the Champions League with them, and it will be your fault. So don't sack me. Can we do a goal, though, please, lads? That would That would be helpful if we could do a goal. Um, it is Arsenal with the ball, though, who are building through Kai Havertz in midfield. And uh, it looks like they're playing Ben White as a libero, maybe, or an inverted wing back. Because you've got White and Rice there and Saliba's come out there. I guess Ben White is playing the uh, the Zinchenko role as the inverted wing back, which is, I mean, I guess he's capable of playing it when he was at Brighton. He would occasionally play as a defensive midfielder. When he was at Posh years ago, he would occasionally play um, outside in the uh, in the defensive midfield positions, very occasionally. Um, he wasn't very good when he played for us. Apparently he got better. Um, that's not good. We're 2-0 down. If we get thrashed today, it does become a problem. A narrow defeat at the Emirates, I think we get away with it. It's being disallowed. I'd like to think we get away with a 1-0 away against Arsenal because Arsenal are third in the league. They're a good team. They're second in the league. Now, we're supposed to lose this match. And actually, just like it's been so many times this season, we're actually ahead on XG. Pedro coming in as a striker for us. Goodness me, I hope he's good. Um, right, we're going to bring on Almada. We are get, we're going to change the whole front three because we're just creating nothing. There you go. We'll go with that as the front three for the rest of the match and see what we can come up with with those boys up front. If we offer some encouragement, we're not going to demand more. We're not supposed to win here, but it would just just encourage them to you know maybe go and grab an equaliser. Wouldn't an equaliser be nice? Right, we've got one more change because of course we took a Stupinian off early on. Who have we got on the bench? Who could? I mean. Quick pick really wanted James Milner in the team from the start. So you know what? James Milner, this is your opportunity. Playing as a centre mid on attack. Go and, go and get us back into this football match. And then I might be more inclined to listen to my assistant manager when we uh, when we start discussing a lineup for the next match. Martinelli has caused us all kinds of problems. So he's scored one. He's had one disallowed. Uh, he's been dealt with quite well by Almada there, of all people. And now we've got the chance for a counter-attack. Gross uh, selling the dummy to Kai Havertz, his lovely stuff, and Veltman into João Pedro. There's your example of the winger starting wide and cutting in. Unfortunately, he didn't do much with it once he'd cut in, but that's what that instruction is supposed to do. He, was, he had chalk on his boots. He was so wide. But as soon as he got the ball, rather than go going forward he comes across and creates problems in the center which is exactly what i want him to be doing right you can't sack me off of that that was a good performance against a very good arsenal team we play bottom of the league fulham next and there's the meeting to discuss my future right right we our next three games because i assume it's gonna be over three fulham chelsea burnley we can win against Fulham and Burnley. If they give me five games, we've got Fulham, Burnley, Luton, Crystal Palace. We could win all four of them. Chelsea are a potential banana skin. But I can't believe they're doing this off the back of that Arsenal game. We're turning things around. Evan Ferguson, that's a problem. We need to fix him. I'm not going to propose him a target. I just want him to do better. Right. Your performance hasn't been good enough. Your position is under serious threat. Well... Note that your notable criticism isn't the match that's just happened. I think that's important. They're fairly pleased with the number of goals scored while using a controlled possession style. Yes, but we conceded more than we... This is going to be an interesting meeting. Hi, Tony. How are you doing? We're not happy with your current performance and are considering your position at the club. We would like to know why you think your team has performed so badly. Um, we did have a really hard fixture list. Can we see how things are going now? It's eased a bit. We'll take the hard run of fixtures into account, but we want to know how you plan to improve the team's performances. Just by playing better, like we have been recently. I promise you that things will look a lot better in a month's time. Give me until then. That's a risky little game. If I can just get him to back off without a promise, that would be ideal. Um, hope you can afford me some more time to turn things around. The morale amongst the squad is poor, but it's something which is easily rectified. Hope you can afford me some more time. We have our problems, but they can be solved quickly and we can recapture our best form. Um, 
things didn't go to plan this season, but I hope you can adopt a patient approach and understand we no, not next season. Things haven't gone well so far. Just give me until the end of the season. I'm confident I can turn things around. We've just brought through a number of quality of cat. No, see that one. End of the season. We have confidence in you. We hope it isn't misplaced. You have until the end of the season to turn things around. Come on. We believe it's important to stay on good terms with you. So hopefully we can continue to work together to build a positive future for the club. I don't, we, I mean, Tony, we didn't fully clarify what turning things around means. Is that, is that now on as a promise? Have I been set a target? No. Um, okay. So I guess... Do we just have to finish in the top half? I'm intrigued. I'm very... Hmm. Supporters love me. Well, you know what? I'm not getting sacked today, and I think I'm getting till January now. He's just promised me till the end of the season. He can't now sack me after Chelsea, surely. So my plan from here, I'm actually going to try and get some matches under my belt. We're going to get through December, assuming I don't get sacked. Obviously, if we're on the brink of being sacked again, I'll come back a little bit sooner. But my plan is I want to get to the point where in tomorrow's episode, you're meeting the new signings there at the club and we can go and tackle January properly. So let's get some matches under our belts now. Let's win some matches. And hopefully when I come back tomorrow, we'll be like 14th in the league. That would be absolutely lovely if we can pull that off. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.